Nayara. Is someone from Redunga? Nayarada Madhava Jaya Kunja Bihari Nayarada Madhava Jaya Kunja Bihari Kopirana Bhalava Grivadari Jaya Grivadari Kopirana Bhalava Grivadari Jaya Grivadari Go Pirana Bhalava Grivadari Jaya Grivadari Yes, so Dananana Brother Dananana Jaya Brother Dananana Yes, so Dananana, Brother Dananana, Jaya Brother Dananana. Yes, so Dananana, Brother Dananana, Jaya Brother Dananana. Yamuna Dira Varachari Jaya Kunja Bihari Yamuna Dira Varachari Jaya Kunja Bihari Yamuna Dira Varachari Jaya Kunja Bihari
Hararamarava Jayakunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Jaya Kunja Vihari Kopi Jana Balabha Grivardhari Jaya Grivardhari Kopi Dana Balaba Grivardhari Jaya Grivardhari Yes, so Dhananjana, Raja Dhananjana, Jaya Raja Dhananjana. Yes, O Dhananjana, Raja Dhananjana, Jaya Raja Dhananjana. Yamuna Tira Varachari Jaya Kunja Bihari Yamuna Tira Varachari Jaya Kunja Bihari Yamuna Tira Varachari Jaya Kunja Bihari Radha Madhava Jaya Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Jaya Kunja Bihari Jaya Om Vishnupad Paramahamsa Parvita Kacharya Asadhara Sadhushi Shriman his divine grace, Lacey, Bhaktivedanta Swami Raj, Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai, Gaur Primanande Haribo, Slava Zarani Bhaktam, Slava Shri Guru, Shri Grangi, Mom Vishnu Vraya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutta, Shri Mati, Bhaktivedanta Swami Tanamane, Namaste, Saraswatunde, Ve, Gaur Vani Bacharane, Nirvi Shesha, Srinivadi, Paskatyade, Siddharane, Om Agyana Timanandasya, Gananjana Salakaya, Chaksur Militam Yena Tazmai Shri Guru Vena Maha Shri Chaitanya Manobishtam Sapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Tadati Swapadanti Kam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Uta Parakamalam 
Shri Guru Vaishnavam Cha, Shri Rupam Sagrajatam, Sahagana Raghunatham Vitam Tam Sajivam, Sarvaitam Savadutam Prajna Saitam, Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Shri Radha Krishna Padan, Sahagana Lalita, Shri Visakhan Vitam Cha, Hey Krishna Karna Sindhu, Dinabando Jagatpate, Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostite, Tapta Kanshana Gorangi Radhe Vrindavaneshari, Prishubhanu Siddha Devi, Pranamami Hari Priye, Vanchakapa Trivyascha, Kripa Sindhu Vyavacha, Padidanam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Namo Namaha, Shri Krishna Chaitanya Pranitananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shivasiddhi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 9, Chapter 3, The Marriage of Sukanya and, and Chaivana Muni, text number, well, we're beginning the chapter. I'm going to read the uh, summary. This chapter describes the dynasty of Sharyati, another son of Manu, and also tells about Sukanya and, and Revati. Devagyan Sharyati gave instructions about what to do in the ritualistic ceremony observed on the second day of the Yajna of the Agnirasas. One day, Sharyati, along with his daughter known as Sukanya, went to the ashram of Chaivanamuni. There, Sukanya saw the two glowing substances within a hole of earthworms. And by chance, she pierced those, those two glowing substances. As soon as she did this, blood began to ooze from that hole. Consequently, King Sharyati and his companions suffered from constipation and in inability to pass urine. When the king asked why the circumstances had suddenly changed, he found that Sukanya was the cause of this misfortune. Then they all offered prayers to Jaivanamuni just to satisfy him according to his own desire. And Devagyan Saryati offered his daughter to Chaivana Muni, who was a very old man. When the heavenly physicians, the Ashvini Kumara brothers, once visited Chaivana Muni, the Muni requested them to give him back his youth. These two physicians took Chaivana Muni to a particular lake in which they bathed and, rega and regained full youth. After this, Sukanya could not distinguish her husband. She then surrendered unto the Ashvini Kumaras, who were very satisfied with her chastity, and who therefore in introduced her again to her husband, Chaivana Muni. To her husband. Chaivana Muni then engaged King, King Sharyati in performing the Soma Yagya and gave the Ashvini Kumaras the privilege to drink the Soma Urasa. The king of heaven, Lord Indra, became very angry at this, but he could not do could do no harm to Shayati. Thereafter, therefore, th thenceforward, the Ashvini Kumara physicians were able to share in the Somarasa. Shayati later had three sons, named Uttanabarhi, Anart Anartha, and Burishena. Anar Anartha had one son, whose name was Revata. Revata had 100 sons, of whom the eldest was Kukumi. Kukumi was advised by Lord Brahma to offer his beautiful daughter Revati to Baladev, who belonged to the Vishnu Tattva category. After doing this, Kukumi retired from family life 
and enter the forest of Badrik Ashram to execute austerities and penances. Okay, so we're going to go on with reading the story. I'm not going to read the uh, purport because there are no purports. So I'll just read the translations. Sri Shukadeva Goswami continued, O King, Sharyati, another son of Manu, who is ruler, completely aware of Vedic knowledge, was a ruler, completely aware of Vedic knowledge. He gave instructions about the functions for the second day of the Yagya to be performed by the descendants of Angirya, Angira. Sharyati had a beautiful lotus-eyed daughter named Sukanya, with whom he went to the forest to see the ashram of Chaivana Muni. While that Sukanya, surrounded by her friends, was collecting various types of fruits from the trees in the forest, she saw within the hole an earthworm, two things glowing like lum- luminaries. Within the hole of an earthworm, two things glowing like luminaries. As if induced by providence, the girl igno- ignorantly pierced those two glowworms with a thorn. And when they were pierced, blood began to ooze out of them. Thereupon, all the soldiers of Sharyati were immediately obstructed from passing urine and stool. Upon perceiving this, Sharyati spoke to his associates in surprise. How strange it is that one of us has attempted to do something wrong to Chaivanamuni, the son of Brigu. It certainly appears that someone among us has polluted this ashram. Being very much afraid, the girl, Sukanya, said to her father, I have done something wrong, for I have ignorantly pierced these two luminary substances with a thorn. After hearing this statement by his daughter, King Sharyati was very much afraid. In various ways, he tried to appease Shaivada Muni, for it was he who sat within the hole of the earthworm. King Sharyati, being very com- com- contemplative, and thus understanding Chaivana Muni's purpose, gave his daughter in charity to the sage. Thus released from danger with great difficulty, he took permission from Chaivana Muni and returned home. Purport. The king, after hearing the statement of his daughter, certainly told the great sage, Chaivana Muni, everything about his daughter had ignorantly committed about how his daughter had ignorantly committed such an offense. The Muni, however, inquired from the king whether the daughter was married. In this way, the king, understanding the purpose of the great sage, Chaivana Muni, Tad Apri Prayam Agyaya, immediately gave the Muni his daughter in charity and escaped the danger of being cursed. Thus, with the permission of the great sage, the king returned home. Mong Vishnu Braya Krishna Prasthai Bhutta, Srimati Bhaktivaranta Swami Tanamane, Namaste Sarasatum Deve, Gauravani Bhacharane, Nirvishesha Srinivadi Paskatiade Satarane. So, just a few words about this particular verse, and then we'll go on to the next purport, which is actually a real purport, full purport. The uh, As residents of Kali Yuga, we have to adjust our intelligence to understand what's going on. Not only we don't understand sometimes why things are going on, but to just understand what's going on. Because as we heard in the summary, somehow or another, Chaivana Muni wanted to get, regain his youth, but he couldn't do it by himself. Now the same Muni who could make himself into an earthworm, the size of an earthworm, couldn't change his body into a young person. And at the same time, he had the power, so many different types of power, to do things. Not only he changed himself, he could actually fit into a hole the size of an earthworm, but he could also obstruct the passing of urine and stool for the king and his, his associates. And at the same time, the whole aim was to get one lady as his wife. <laughs> so to become a great sage like that, powerful sage. You have to do so many austerities. 
But it always gets down to the same thing. Eating, sleeping, mating, defending. <laughs> that we can work, work in this material world and we can get a bigger, a longer life, we can get more material opulence, we can get more material intelligence, but it always comes down to the same thing. Uh, sense gratification. And even if you're a great sage like Chaivana Muni, one can't escape that because one has to have a purpose of life. If the purpose of life is not to obtain Krishna, then it always comes down to the same thing. Ultimately, the highest happiness in the material world is sex life, either gross or subtle. And that's what everyone is after in the material world. Even Brahma, although Brahma is mostly interested in self-realization because he has the most intelligence in the universe, but even he apparently became bewildered at, by his daughter. Not only his daughter, but his daughter who took the form of a stag. Well, actually, the form of a deer. And then he took the form of a stag and ran after her. So we can't expect that in the material world, everyone is automatically, even the great sages and the demigods, have the highest motivation. As a matter of fact, that's what Srimad Bhagavatam is more or less showing us. Whether you're in hell, you're in Ljubljana, or you're in Indra Loka, or Amaha Loka, or wherever you are, it's the same thing going on. Maybe more glorified, maybe longer of duration, maybe worthy of being put into the Bhagavatam as an example not to follow but is an example of the uselessness of material existence. And unless one becomes convinced of that, then there's no real advantage of reading the 10th canto. Because the 10th canto can only be experienced by, with spiritual senses. Although, I should say fully experienced or actually experienced. Although we can read the 10th canto and experience something, because there are interesting stories, as a matter of fact, Prabhupada gave us the Krishna book very early in the, in the movement, which is a summary of the 10th canto. But he didn't think that he had such advanced devotees and therefore he wanted them to enter into the pastimes of Radha and Krishna after being in the movement for one year or six months. But Prabhupada knew in the future, people want to know who Krishna is. As Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada said, that don't only, to his disciples, don't only look for nivriti marg, that is renunciation, but also we have to know what pravriti marg is, at least spiritual pravriti marg. We have to know what the goal is. We have to know that after getting out of material existence, there is something better than material existence. There's a spiritual world. There's spiritual existence. There's spiritual activities. And although we may not be able to fully taste them at the present time, we should at least know about them. Otherwise, one will simply become an impersonalist after some time. If there's no higher goal, if there's no hope of entering into a more loving, more extensive, a more intense, a more stable, eternal uh, existence, then one will simply go after impersonal. Or, generally what happens is that instead of impersonalism, one simply becomes absorbed in materialism. But at the same time, the whole nine cantos of Srimad Bhagavatam, and incluso, include, including Srila Prabhupada's, I get my Spanish sometimes thrown in there, <laughs> Sometimes the we have to understand at the same time because even in the tenth canto, and probably gives the Krishna book, he throws in Bhagavad Gita all the time. <laughs> now Krishna, when he was born, he didn't speak Bhagavad Gita to Devaki and, and Vasudev. But we should understand tenth canto from the vision of Krishna of the Bhagavad Gita also. The Bhagavad Gita is not some dry philosophy. Bhagavad Gita is all about prema and love, loving service. 
Therefore, at the end, Krishna says, Sarva Dharma Prachaja Mame Kamasharanam Vraja. Now, Vraja can be the forest. Give up all activities and surrender to me, and return I'll protect you from all sinful reactions. But it can also be understood, Sarva Dharma Prachaja. Give up all varieties of religion, Sarva Dharma Prachaja, Mame Kamasharanam, and surrender to me also only. Sarva Dharma Prajaja Mam Ekam Sharnam Raja Aham Twang Sarva Pa Pebi. And I'll t- protect you from all sinful ra- reactions. Aham Twang Sarva Pa Pebi. Mokshi Syami Ma Suchaha. Sarva Dharma Prajaja Mam Ekam Sharnam Raja. We can also understand Krishna is telling us go to Braj. Otherwise, why do you throw in Braj there? Even Prahlad Maharaj told his father, although we may not like Hiranyakashipu, but Hiranyakashipu, we have some of the same things in common with Hiranyakashipu. <laughs> to some extent, we're also interested in a soft, some gold to buy a soft bed. Or, of course, nowadays it's a very expensive mattress. You need gold to buy the $5,000 mattress, so as soon as you lie down on it, you're out. <laughs> six hours, and the mattress shakes you at a certain time and wakes you up. <laughs> so it takes some gold to actually buy such a mattress. So gold in a soft match. Everyone in the material world is interested in those things, and in between, eating, because unless we eat, we won't be able to sleep. And then at the end, of li- at the end in order to keep our soft mattress and our food supply coming in, we need to produce, reproduce. We need children in our old age to protect us and maintain us. And at least pay for the old age home they put us into. So this is there in the material existence, but at the same time, we have to see it in relationship to going beyond material existence so that we arrive at the stage where we take Krishna consciousness seriously. More seriously than we take material existence. Now in the beginning, when we're cultivating Krishna consciousness, we take material existence more seriously than we take Krishna consciousness. It's just normal. Because we don't know where we're going after this body. We don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow. And if you want to find out, you can read the newspaper and you can die of of fear, (laughs) anxiety, (laughs) which is more or less, (laughs) that's what they're trying to do is make you afraid so you surrender to them. Just like Krishna says, if you don't surrender to me, then I'll sink you down to the lowest species of life. And the modern society, the leaders, they're also trying to induce fear. If you don't surrender to us, there's no job, there's no food, there's no hope for you. Surrender. Vote for us or else you're finished. Of course, it doesn't matter who you vote for, it's all for us anyhow. <laughs> we just want you to think that you're actually free or making a decision. Because we pay for Party A, we pay for Party B, we pay for Party C, and whatever other party, we pay for it. <laughs> so vote for some party. And, make, and that way you think you're actually free. You're free to do whatever we tell you according to the laws of karma. Whatever your karma, you can, whatever reactions you, you have, you're free to get, and you're free to get more reactions by following us. So we have to gradually go from taking material life more seriously than Krishna consciousness to taking Krishna consciousness at least equally as seriously as material life. And then gradually take spiritual life more important than the material existence. That let it go on as it's going on. It doesn't matter how many, how much I know about who's doing what and why they did it. It's not going to change anything. But if I know why Krishna is doing something, why his devotees are doing something, what they did and why they're doing it, and I 
dovetail my life with their life and leave the rest to him. Leave the rest to Krishna as the actual person controlling everything and understand that he'll actually protect us if we actually take shelter of him. Of course, that doesn't mean we neglect ordinary dealings, as it says in the Nectar Devotion. The devotee, one of the first one qualities is he doesn't neglect ordinary dealings. But at the same time, he doesn't think that ordinary dealings are beyond Krishna's realm either. Everything is happening by the mercy of Krishna. That's called Krishna consciousness. That was Prabhupada's last words that I, on that video, where they were, Prabhupada was, I think in November 1977, and Prabhupada was on his, was, couldn't even sit up, and they had a microphone next to his mouth, and he was dictating the purpose of the Shemad Bhagavatam, the 10th canto, and he said that everything is going on by the will of Krishna. This is called Krishna consciousness. So as soon as we think something's going on outside of Krishna's will, then we'll be in anxiety, we'll be fearful. Why is this happening to me? I'm such a nice devotee. I did so much for Krishna. Why is he putting me in this situation? So that I can surrender. That's why he's putting us into this situation. So we can surrender means, so we can think whatever, whatever goes on is going on by Krishna's will, but my will should be dovetailed with Krishna's will. I should find out what he wants me to do. It wasn't that after hearing Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna decided that yes, everything's going on by Krishna's will. He showed me the universal form. He told me that whether I fight or not, all the worries are going to be killed. So why should I get involved? Krishna, look over there. <laughs> I'm not going to get my hands dirty. As Prabhupada once said, that if you kill a skunk, then your hands will smell bad. <laughs> but if Krishna tells you to kill the skunk, <laughs> what can you do? I guess you have to wash your hands afterwards, that's all. <laughs> but Krishna, so Krishna told Arjuna, you have to fight. And Arjuna understood everything was under Krishna's control, but because he wants me to fight, therefore that's what I'll do, simply to please him. Now, whether Arjuna fought or not, the outcome was already decided by Krishna. But if Arjuna fought, then he got the credit. That's all. He got the credit of surrendering to Krishna. And that Krishna supplied Arjuna the intelligence so he's able to do things which no ordinary personality can do. He empowered Arjuna to do his service, and therefore, ultimately, Arjuna came out successful. In every respect, he became fully Krishna conscious, although he was always fully Krishna conscious. At the same time, he became victorious in the battle in every respect. So here, so many intrigues in the ninth canto. And this is just one of them. And it's, you know, wonder, you know, is this true that why is this Muni? He can do so, he can, li he can make himself so small that he can fit into the hole that an earthworm lives in and yet he can't make himself useful. In other words, you can get so much mystic power, but that doesn't mean you have all mystic power. You're not Yogeshwara. It's rather limited. And therefore, although he could, do, he could change his body like that, he couldn't make it into a youth. And at the same time, he could stop the bodily functions of the king and his associates so he can get a young daughter. So we have to take this in perspective that it's not meant as a romance story. As we'll find out later, the Ashwini Kumaras come and make, give him a youthful body and it's him and Sukanya happily ever after. <laughs> no, it's not happily ever after. <laughs> as we'll find out with Subari, uh, these are very instructive pastimes. Zubari, Muni, <coughs> later on we'll hear about him, the downfall of Zubari. Same theme. Old man sitting in the Jamuna. Now, t 
to sit in the Yamuna for thousands of years, you have to have some kind of mystic power. Try and sit in it for, for 15 minutes. <laughs> Sitting in the Yamuna for, 50, for thousands of years, what was he doing? Obviously, there must have been something attractive. He wasn't just watching the fish go by. <laughs> wow, this Yamuna is amazing. <laughs> then thousands of years went by. No, he must have been meditating on something transcendental. Only in that way can so much time go by and you wouldn't become impatient. If you sit in Brahman for billions of years, even billions of lifetimes of Brahma, but because you're in Brahman, time goes rapidly because there's no anxiety. There's a kind of happiness from no anxiety. So he's sitting there for thousands of years and then suddenly two fish come along and he becomes, attra- becomes attracted to them. And why is that? <laughs> What's so attractive about two fish? <laughs> What's that? Application. I don't know. And he made the application of devotees. Yeah, I'm sure he did, <laughs> if he ever had it. <laughs> no, he was sitting there watching two... I mean, did anyone... Even the worst p- pornography... You never see people, people taking pictures of fish, <laughs> putting on the pornography site. <laughs> it's very hard to get excited about two fish, you know, their love affairs. <laughs> and it happened, we find out, is due to a offense against the great devotee, Garuda. As we'll find out the story later on, Garuda, he's not a, a vegetarian. He may be a vegan, but he's not a vegetarian. <laughs> now, how is a great devotee who's not a vegetarian? That's another thing we have to wrap our ra- minds around. <laughs> you mean if I become a follower, if I worship Garuda, I can eat fish? <laughs> I got to offer him something, right? <laughs> what do you do with the prasad? <laughs> Anyhow, it's something you have to adjust our minds to that we're Krishnarians. And generally speaking, we're only worshiping Krishna. We and Krishna we follow Krishna. Patram Pushpam Palam Toyam. In any case, Garuda takes away the head fish. Sarbari Muni curses him, don't come to this Jamuna again or else you'll be you'll lose your life. Because of that offense against the great devotee of which Garuda didn't counteract, but, but because of that, he became attracted to some fish. <laughs> Hopefully we don't get such a curse. <laughs> and because he was attracted to the two fish, he came out of the water, and he was able to expand himself. Well, first of all, he wanted to, he wanted to marry the ladies too, of course. The ladies that weren't interested in him the king was very diplomatic. He said, if any daughter I have of my 50 daughters, anyone becomes interested in you, you, you can have her. And they're looking at this old man, as, you know, if you're in the water for a thousand years, your skin gets a little wrinkled. <laughs> <laughs> and you smell a little fishy also. <laughs> so, no way, you know. <laughs> And the king was diplomatic. And you know, Sarbari Muni understood that this is diplomacy. And therefore, he, had, he made himself into a young man by his mystic power. Because he had so much mystic power, he was able to do that much. He didn't go to the Ashvini Kumaras or take Chaivaran Prash. Chaivaran Prash is noted because it makes you more youthful. Chavan Prash in this age is not so powerful anymore. <laughs> Anyhow, he just made himself into a youthful person and then all the ladies wanted him because he was so attractive. And then he expanded himself eight times. Eight times in like, you know, kind of like if you have a file on the computer and you copy it eight times. It's not a different one. It's just the same file, but it's eight times but then he's expanded. So he's able to expand himself eight times. And I guess if he 
associated with his wife, and he, all the ladies wanted it to marry him, so he, he married all 50 and lived with them for some years, but it wasn't happily ever after. After a while, he got tired, and he decided to go back into the ocean or make his life perfect in Krishna consciousness again, and he became successful. He got the experience he needed to detach himself from material existence and focus on Krishna consciousness. So these instructive stories for us, not meant to think, wow, how exciting. If I get some mystic power, I can get 50 ladies at one time and expand myself eight times. As long as they don't see what's going on, it'll be all right. <laughs> but after a while, he got tired of the whole thing too. There's nothing in the material world that's so attractive that any kind of mystic power can actually make up for the fact that it's all ultimately material. And therefore it's an impetus to take Krishna consciousness, to go from the stage of taking Krishna consciousness as something interesting, but not so important compared to my material existence, to an equal concentration on both of them, and then ultimately just concentrating on spiritual life. That's the moral of these stories. So I'll stop there. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Sure, there's more morals, but that's one of them. Okay. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for the lecture. <clears throat> uh, you said that uh, we should not expect that uh, in this world, in this material world, sages and even demigods have higher motivations. And I want to ask... Well, can I just say, yeah. higher, it's not that they don't have higher motivations compared to us, but they may not have the highest motivations. <laughs> okay, the, the question still stands. Yeah. I want to ask if... Um, um, we see that our superiors or uh, that our authorities behave in such a way that is not really according to the higher morals or that uh, it only follows their own interest to obtain name and fame, uh, who are we to follow? If we cannot expect that from our superiors or authorities. Well, that's a very sad <laughs> story. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think anyone who's been in the movement for so many years as only the objective of getting name and fame, especially in the Hare Krishna movement. I mean, if you want to get name and fame, there's, there's better movements you can join to get it. <laughs> this is a movement where everyone's very, you know, everyone's looking, oh, look, name and fame, get, you know, defame him, <laughs> purify him, tell, you know, advertise all over the, you know, three zones. This person has a little desire for name and fame. You know, what do you think about it? Ah! <laughs> no, I mean, we have to see that there's other, there may be motivations for name and fame because we're in Maya. But what name and fame for? For this body. But name and fame for this body for what? Because it's engaged in devotional service. And because, you know, ultimately, if we look at it, they're trying to get name and fame by engaging in devotional service. And that means they're trying to surrender to Krishna more and more so that the activities of their body becomes more and more famous. So in one sense, it's not so good for them. It could, there's higher stages than that. But still, it's not so bad because at least they're dovetailing their desire for name and fame by, utilize, by trying to get it by doing more and more service for Krishna. So it's not so bad. Uh, Krishna said that whatever great personality does, the common people follow. So are we supposed to follow such well, what, a behavior? You such can follow behavior? them. It's better than if you, you have to follow someone. Better follow them than following you know, some politician or movie star or whatever else. Better follow them if you want name and fame. And if you want pure devotional service, you, then you know, find someone that you think is actually doesn't have the desire for name and fame and follow them, whoever they are see the good parts of them. Or if, hear about Prabhupada or the Acharyas and our, our Mahajans in the Bhagavatam and follow them. There are examples of devotees who are more, less selfless or more selfless, more devotional. And then we have the pure devotees like Prabhupada and the Acharyas and the examples in the Srimad Bhagavatam. 
Yes. It's really dramatic, you know. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Uh, you spoke, uh, well, in, in the purpose he had said that when the heavenly physicians, Aswini Kumara brothers, uh, once visit uh, Shavana Muni, the Muni requests them to give back his youth. All this happened in this planet or in a different planet? I can't remember. It's been a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> But these stories are related to this planet Earth. You don't, you don't, you're not sure. Well, unless it says so, you know, we can assume that it's more or less on this planet because the Bhagavatam that we're given in this age is for the, us. But sometimes it, it doesn't really make any difference because where it was. And besides that, we don't even know where we're living right now, mm -hmm. according to the Bhagavatam. We think there's, you know, we're floating around in a globe somewhere. But according to, you know, Srimad Bhagavatam, we're in a completely different place than what we're imagining. We don't even know where we are. So what is the difference? All we know, we're in Slovenia somewhere. And if you have enough money, you can take a trip and go to Australia or something. We think that's everything. But that's not according to the Bhagavatam. Um, sorry, and, and it mentioned... And besides the, that, oh, sorry. besides that, whether it's Dwarpa Yuga or Treta Yuga or Satya Yuga, this, even this little place that we're in right now, Ljubljana was a lot different back then. We can't even imagine what it was like. Is this place Badikara Ashram? I, I heard that it exists in India. Is still there? There's so many ashrams. Oh, it could be Badarik Ashram. It could be it probably is, is the same, but I don't think it was exactly the same. You go there now, see if you can see Nara Narayan. <laughs> we can't see anything. We don't even know what Padarik Ashram is, really looks like. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> There's a question from the internet. Did Sobari Muni got some benefit of residing in Yamuna? Describing the absorption of a third class devotee in a deity worship, Srila Prabhupada writes in Srimad Bhagavatam, third canto, 25th, 36, that even a third class devotee is the transcendental position. No, Question me. What is the difference of being in transcendental position of third, second, and first class devotees? Well, Kanista Adhikari, depending on what level of Kanista Adhikari they're on, because Kanishtagari goes from the sufferer all the way up to the, the four Kamaras who in Brahman realization. So they're not all equal. But the, the four Kamaras were situated in transcendence. Well, the person who's suffering, he's situated in the material world and he gets a little glimpse of freedom from suffering by doing devotional service. That way he's acting transcendentally and that relieves him a little bit of his suffering. So it's not all the same. On the other hand, the Madhya Madhikari, he lives on the spiritual platform. He's liberated, but he's not fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness. And the first class devotee is fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness. So liberation is automatically included. I also have one question. Okay. Uh, you mentioned that at the beginning when devotee comes to the uh, movement, they are more or less uh, have some inclination towards Krishna, but also a lot more to material things, activities, uh, and that uh, we should progress in that way. Is it uh, suitable or or uh, good that we somehow equal? Maybe like I was thinking, like if I'm uh, in the in job, some job, to uh, for eight hours. Then, to progress, I should eight hours uh, put the, to devotion or devotional service. Or well, that sounds good. And even the <laughs> even the eight hours of work can be done for Krishna too, if our work is done. If the for a householder, Prabhupada said, uh, one can contribute fifty percent of his earnings to spread Krishna consciousness. And even the house, if the house is 
is bought for, paid for, but in the house, there's worship of Krishna going on, the family sitting down morning and evening, chanting Hare Krishna, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, worshiping the deity, then even the work is, is being utilized, even the part that doesn't go to pay for uh, spreading Krishna consciousness, it's still, it's, being ma- it's maintaining Krishna consciousness in the house. So the work is spiritualized by the results going to Krishna. And therefore, even at work, then instead of having a picture of our dog on our desk, we'll have a picture of Krishna. Because <laughs> that's who we're working for. Okay. Kuala Grantara Shimad Bhagavatam Kijai, Shila Prabhupada Kijai, Gaur Primanande.